Hi everybody! Today we're going to be looking at some little known facts about our favourite human sized bug superhero, Kamen Rider. Now, it does say 10 in the title, but in actuality there's going to be a little bit more than that, making it worth every penny. Where to start, you may ask? Let's go right from the very beginning. The very first rider, Pongo Takashi. To Number 1! It's not exactly an unknown piece of information now that Hiroshi Fujioka injured himself in a motorcycle accident while working on episode 9 and 10, which was simply a setting shot to be used as stock footage. He broke his leg, or rather smashed it completely, and was advised that he wouldn't recover for 3-6 to six months. At the time, the first episode had not even broadcast yet, and in fact, Fujioka watched from the comfort of his hospital bed. On top of that, Fujioka admitted that it was too much for him, and his current situation brought him to tears. If you want to know a little bit more about it, Fujioka goes into detail about it in his autobiography, all of which is contained in the first chapter. He also goes on to compare his bedridden state to Hongo being tied down for the cyborg surgery. Number 2 Unless you've watched the original series, you might not be too familiar with the character Taki. If not, you might know him as the Skull Rider character in the Kamen Rider Spirits manga. After the aforementioned accident with Hongo, Taki was brought in to be a human character who could fight without transforming, as a replacement for Fujioka not being able to appear. Taki was chosen to be an FBI agent instead of other crime fighting organisations due to the popularity of an American show, also called FBI, that was broadcast in Japan at the time. There was fears that Taki as a human would be considered too strong or stronger than Hongo if if he was able to dispatch all enemies that he came across to circumvent this, Taki would beat down three shocker grunts but be hit and knocked down by the fourth. An additional fact, Taki was considered to be a candidate for Kamen Rider Sango during the original show's run, but the heads of production decided to go with V3 and create a sequel show of its own. Another plan was to bring back Taki during V3 and have him become Rider Man instead. Number 3 Toshiki Inoue is a name you've probably heard of if you've watched any number of Rider shows, or Sentai. He's famously the head writer for Chojin Sentai Jetman, Choko Senshi Chengeron, and early Heisei shows like Agito, Fies, and the latter half of Hibiki, as well as various episodes and movies throughout Tokusatsu's back catalogue. He's renowned for his work on Tokusatsu, including it being his big break, but he got a helping hand from his father, who had a long history of working on television shows during the Showa period, under the pen name Masuru Igami. He started off in the 50s and 60s writing for shows like Planet Prince, Master Ninja Akakage, and Lightspeed Esper. But more importantly, he was the head writer on the original Kamen Rider, pinning a total of 41 episodes out of 98. He continued as one of the main writers all the way up to Super 1, and went on to work on a variety of other shows. Toshiki followed in his father's footsteps working on Kamen Rider, but also on the anime adaption of Ninja Akakage. Number 4 Let's skip a bit to the Heisei Rider period and stop off at the auditions for Kamen Rider Agito. One of the finalists of the title role was Yusuke Kosaka. What's so special about this young actor, you might wonder? He's the son of Ryo Hayami, aka Kamen Rider X. Now, you would think that this would give him a step up in the process, but he kept his father's legacy a secret, with good reason. Toei had a policy for main actor's family members not to be involved in front of the camera in a key role, possibly to avoid cases of nepotism. Eventually, his family history was unearthed, and Korsaka was disqualified from the auditions. Number 5 Kamen Rider Yuki is known for having 13 riders, while nowadays it's not the biggest number with shows like Kamen Rider Gain, but at the time Agito preceded it and only had 4 in the TV show. Another Agito counts but V1 doesn't, and fans were rather startled back then. The theme of the show was Rider vs Rider, so you'd think that 13 would be enough. However, producer Shirakura originally wanted a staggering 50 to appear, basically one every episode. Director Yuta Tazaki responded that it was a tough request, thinking just about suit costs, what about 13? And so that's how we ended up with that number. In a recent talk show, Shirakura remembered this story, but could not help but wonder, why is the director worrying about suit costs? Number 6 
Reusing motifs in Sentai and Kamen Rider are all but too often now, but the length between using, say, dinosaurs for Judanger, Abaranger, and Kyoruja was 10 to 11 years each. Both Kamen Rider Ryuki and Blade used cards, but there was only one year between them, that being Kamen Rider Fies, stuck in the middle. Ryuki used Avant cards that the riders used to summon their weapons and contract monsters to perform finishing moves. To differentiate the two, Blade's Ryao's cards are playing card based, and each card holds the power of the monster trapped within. The weapons were separate entities that could use and hold the cards in congregation with them. Also, the riders would use multiple cards at once for a variety of attacks, like Blade uses Kick Lotus and Thunder Deer Rouse cards to perform his Lightning Blast Rider Kick. And just to make sure, the fighting style of the Blade Riders was intentionally contrasted. Number 7. The first episode of Fies is a rather odd case. The show was my first ever Kamen Rider, and I stumbled upon it without any frame of reference and watched it with the mindset that I thought it was one of those cool J drama shows that I heard back in 2003. And my oh my, my jaw dropped when people started turning into monsters. Many years later, talking on now defunct forums, I was glad to hear that I wasn't the only one who was confused at who the main character was meant to be. The show almost tricks you into thinking this is Kibber's tragic story, and boy did he have it rough in that first episode. The lack of Takumi seems intentional, but the truth is Kento Honda was still a high school student at the time, and was busy finishing up his class schedule before committing to Fai's full time. This isn't remotely the first time that a tokusatsu show has had to accommodate for one of its young actors' school life. But episode 1's filming locations were a number of hours away from Tokyo and was too far for Honda to commute. Number 8 When planning for Kamen Rider Den O, Toei producer Shirakura thought about where the Den liner would travel to, hoping to have some special meaning to the destinations, but was limited by the filming locations that had been the standard for many years. For instance, Saitama Super Arena, where seriously every inch of that place has been used in one shape or another. So he was left with three options, 10 years in the past, a spiritual world, or a parallel world. All of you avid fans know that the spiritual and parallel world ideas were shelved and later used for Kamen Rider Wizard and Decade. An additional fact, when deciding on what specific date they would be using for Ryo Taro and the Imagine would go to, the staff would check Yahoo Weather to see what the weather records were that day. Number 9 One of the highlights of Kamen Rider Wizard are without doubt the action scenes. They're stylish as hell and incorporate elements of XMA, extreme martial arts. Due to the show's merchandise, specifically the wizard rings, Toei didn't want to portray wizard punching anyone with them on his hand, hoping to avoid kids at home imitating and injuring themselves in the process. Instead, XMA's speciality is flair and kicks. This allowed them to avert the problem and give wizard a radically distinctive style. Seiji Takaiwa has been the suit actor for the main rider for over a decade, but Wizard's fancy XMA action was portrayed by Hideki Sugiguchi, who trained in America. He also did the suit acting for Hurricane Polymer in the recent live action adaption. Number 10 Gaim's fruit motif was rather a head scratcher when it was announced back in 2013, no more so than because the previous year was a wizard having a very basic, ordinary design of magic. Ryder is no stranger to obscure motifs over the years, but even Fruits was a bit of a puzzler. The producer at the time had actually suggested to do bugs. Yes, we almost went back to a bug themed Ryder, but this was rejected by Bandai who opted to do Fruits, Nuts and Soda. This isn't uncommon for a toy line distributed like Bandai to have a big hand in developing the shows every year. One of the questions you might have is why exactly did they choose an orange to be associated with the main hero? The answer is, during focus testing with children in the target demographic, it was revealed that orange was their favourite, and so it became Gaim's base form. So there's 10 plus facts about Kamen Rider. What did you find fascinating or perhaps you knew already? I love reading everyone's comments, so please leave them. And if you like what we do here at the Tokusatsu Network, please hit that like button and also subscribe. Thank you.